but then I can be one of the good ones. And I can tell you that not every gay person actually is like them. They're the radicals. They're the activists. The radical extremists. And they're ruining the gay movement. I'm doing great. And it's like, well, you're, you're getting paid. Yeah, I know. Money talks, right? And then it goes on for a little while. It's all fun and games until, hey, what's coming up in the Supreme Court? What's the Supreme Court of the U.S. going to be doing soon? Huh? What happens when all of a sudden gay people aren't allowed to be married anymore? What happens when your marriage certificates are invalidated? What happens if suddenly they reintroduce sodomy laws? Because, you know, we all live in a day and age where our ancestors had to suffer and bleed and die for a lot of the rights that we take for granted. We didn't know that struggle. Dr. Oz is joining the government? Cool. Well, you know, there's still, I feel like at some point Hulk Hogan's got to get his nominee. He said he will nominate Dr. Mehmet Oz to lead the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Cool. CMS operates or oversees healthcare programs and provide coverage to about one out of every two Americans, including Medicare, Medicaid, and Children's Health Insurance Program, and Obamacare Marketplace Exchange, healthcare.gov. Trump last week said he would nominate Robert F. Kennedy, a vaccine skeptic and conspiracy theorist, as the Secretary of Health and Human Department, which CMS is a part of. So it's going to be Dr. Oz and RFK Jr. Fun. Good. Normal. Great. The health awaits. Also, I just saw this headline shared to me by uh, Dave of the Surfs, apparently. Uh, Vice News is now going hard right. Vice, hard right turn to Trumpism. In new video, Vice Editor-in-Chief Shane Smith treats immigrants as a problem and apologizes to Elon Musk for past coverage. Vice News once covered the border with videos that exposed the hardships faced by immigrants, such as the human cost of hardening the U.S.-Mexico border and what it is like to raise your child in an immigration detention center. It was quite a shift then when it was before an election. Vice News uploaded its own YouTube channel, a video originally titled, This is how illegals are sneaking into the USA. Vice News later retitled the video to say, This is how people are sneaking into the USA. Uh, walking back the language that had been overtly dehumanizing immigrants by referring to them as illegals rather than people. The video appears to be representing a new area for the media company. That's funny because Shane Smith was supposed to be kind of like the liberal partner and Gavin McInnes, the other founder of Vice, was the far right partner. But now it seems like everybody's morality is basically about proximity to power, including like, did you see that Jank of TYT basically did one of those pathetic like, uh, Elon, please let me help with the Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, I, I can uh, really uh, reduce the amount of waste in the government. And then Elon replied to him and was like, this will be put under consideration. And like all this stuff. And you're like, my God, that's got to be exhausting, I imagine, to just have your morality basically be based on whatever proximity to power you can achieve at a given time, right? Like, yeah. There are times when my views, such as, hey, by the way, LGBTQ plus people should be treated the same as everyone else, including straight people. They should have equal rights, that kind of stuff. That becomes increasingly unpopular at different points in history, like now. It's a lot scarier now to go to, say, a pride parade if there's going to be a whole bunch of people who show up there to try and fight and beat people up. It's a lot scarier when corporations suddenly realize, oh, God, this is actually not something safe that we can just do and make more money. We're actually going to have to tone down how much we actually care about the so-called civil rights and say that uh, our original campaign, It's Okay to Be Gay, is now going to be called something completely different because we're getting a little bit worried. It's just it's too dangerous for our employees. That's, that's what it is. And it's not exactly that we don't have have any actual morality that you can't base morality on what corporations feel they're going to do safely at any given time like look at disney right now remember when everyone was like disney's so woke and gay and all that kind of shit well now disney's actually just deleting episodes that feature trans storylines because it's at a time now where it's like ooh, that calculation you know that little scale that we always had where it's always going to be a balance of what is profitable versus what is actually going to be safer for our brand and company and right now the scales have gone a little bit like that and so soon as that happens suddenly we didn't actually care about this we're not actually gay i know we said we were but it's really it's it's tenuous it's tentative it's basically we're gonna go back in the closet for a little bit and hey good luck all you queers good luck hopefully everything works out for y'all if it does uh, who knows Maybe we'll be gay again. Maybe you'll feature some gay storylines. Maybe we'll have another lesbian kiss in the background. Maybe some other shit will happen. Who knows? But we're going to have to just sit back and wait until things are a little less scary. Because right now it seems like a lot of the baddies in power are really, really against this stuff. And uh, we just don't want to roll the dice. We want to be able to keep making as much money as possible. So that's why there's a lot of both 
people, pundits, media corporations, companies, multinational corporations, all of them, they pretend to care about civil rights. They don't give a fuck. They will drop you. I'm tired of playing with you at the first sign of anything shifting or changing or being scary. They can be suddenly people who like to attach themselves to civil rights and movements and to say suddenly like how Nike all of a sudden was like, we actually care a lot. Black lives do matter. You know, we're actually going to support an athlete who the NFL will not support. You know, this whole Colin Kaepernick controversy. We're taking a stand. We care about civil rights. We care deeply. Nike cares about you. Hey, guess what? We're, we're going to have a whole brand line, blah, blah, blah. Oh, wait, what, what? Oh, it's not, it's not politically safe right now. Yeah, about that. We're, we're going to have to go in a different direction for a little while yeah just just a little while you know like how bud light did that bud light it, it went from being like hey we're gonna post a single like 30 second social media post featuring a trans influencer and uh, see how that goes okay people are shooting the cans uh kid rock is shooting the cans a lot of people are mad oh they're losing their minds people are, are just buying all these cans and, and just driving trucks right through them wow they're really mad okay here's the thing we didn't actually care about trans rights. We didn't think that trans rights were human rights fundamentally as a core value or principle of our company. Uh, we wanted to make more money. And now we realize that this is backfiring on us because the right have just really lost their minds on this topic. And it's scary to us. So we got a new commercial for you. And it's all American. Yeah. Did you see the new Bud Light ads that came out afterwards? It's like, we believe in freedom. We believe in the American way. And riding a horse into the sunset and how a cold beer can make you feel good after a hard day's work. 9-11 was bad, and it's a good thing that we killed Osama bin Laden, and holy shit, we'll do it again while drinking a Bud Light. Hell yeah, America, we're your beer. Owned by a Belgian company. And you're like, well, yeah, because none of you, all you corporations, you guys are cowards. You don't care about this. And so I don't see, like, it's not a surprise to me. I see this happen all the time in advertising and, and woke advertising cycles or whatever you want to call them. And then it's even sadder, though, to see it happen to people who espouse to have beliefs and morals. Because, yeah, it is harder or scarier at certain times. But guess what? Not everyone is afforded the ability to do that and shapeshift. Not everyone can do that. Not, not everyone gets to stop being a part of that group. Some people just can't stop being trans. Some people can't stop being gay or bisexual or black or indigenous. Like they don't get to just turn that off when it's not politically convenient anymore and then be like, you know what? I want to try and get closer to the levers of power. I mean, there are people who try to be the tokens or be tokenized or get into those groups and be like, yeah, well, I'm one of the good ones. Trust me, they won't come for me if I just Dave Rubin myself 24 seven and get in there, debase myself and then throw all other, you know, fellow gay people under the bus by doing that. But then and I can be one of the good ones. And I can tell you that not every gay person actually is like them. They're the radicals. They're the activists. The radical extremists. And they're ruining the gay movement. I'm doing great. And it's like, well, you're, you're getting paid. Yeah, I know. Money talks, right? And then it goes on for a little while. It's all fun and games until, hey, what's coming up in the Supreme Court? What's the Supreme Court of the U.S. going to be doing soon? Huh? What happens when all of a sudden gay people aren't allowed to be married anymore? What happens when your marriage certificates are invalidated? What happens if suddenly they reintroduce sodomy laws? Because, you know, we all live in a day and age where our ancestors had to suffer and bleed and die for a lot of the rights that we take for granted. We didn't know that struggle. We didn't know what it was like to get beaten on the streets every day if someone saw us being outwardly gay. We get a couple bad looks, sure, or you might hold someone's hand, another dude's hand, and someone's like, oh, you know, F slurs, fucking F slurs, shit like that. Sure, that exists in the today's day and age, but it's not like a police car pulls up and you get beaten half to death and then taken to a police station where they beat the fuck out of you a second time or kill you. It's, it, the, things are a little bit better now. And that didn't come because all of a sudden a bunch of companies decided it's in our best interest to fight for civil rights. That's why suddenly we have the pride flag and that's why all the companies have the pride flag. No, that came again through suffering, through fighting, through death, through bleeding, through blood, ultimately. 
That's why it's so perverse and sick when you see all these companies putting like all these pride flags when they don't actually care about that kind of shit or saying Black Lives Matter or putting up symbolism and all that stuff when they couldn't care less about the civil rights movement or all the black people that have suffered to, you know, get the kind of rights that they have today in the United States and still be oppressed. But then companies want to profit off that and be like, guess what? We got a Juneteenth ice cream. That's that's right, you know, we're, we're going to sell you a delicious ice cream here for all you black folk to remind you that we live in a day and age where we we support you. We care deeply about this fucking, you know, all this shit, even in Canada, the Tim Hortons residential school orange shirt day donuts, donuts. And they're like, well, this is not offensive. No, and I, I know this is kind of, you know, selling a, a commercialized product based on genocide and all that. Yeah, but all the money goes towards, I don't care where the fucking money goes. This is not a commercial product you should be selling and marketing and being like, we're doing our part. We're, we're fighting for indigenous causes. We love you. We, we got this orange ass donut for you to show you our symbolism and that we... Fuck off, honestly. That's so inappropriate. And then look how fast it all changes. Just like, just like that. Fucking as soon as is the going gets tough, all the people who haven't had to suffer or don't know about the history of the suffrage or are, are just not in that group, and we're like, well, yeah, you know, I was I was for trans rights, but pff, things are scary now. I'm cis. I don't gotta worry about that. Yeah, I, I can use any man's bathroom I want to at any time. As a cis man, I also have a lot of other privileges, you know? White-ass skin, I can get away with a ton of shit. I don't have to worry about this. It doesn't concern me. It doesn't affect me. Hey, you know, I can even hide aspects of who I am. I, I can actually be a chameleon, stop talking about this, and then just get on the side right now that's commercially more successful. Maybe I could make a lot of money on Twitter if I started randomly being like, you know what? I, I gave the Republicans a hard time, but... They're right about a couple things. And I got to say, the left, they've lost their mind. And hey, all those LGBTQ plus activists, they're radical. I, I, hey, you can just say that you want to have some certain kinds of, you know, limits to what certain people's civil rights should be. And that, that there are radical extremists who are out of control. And they're just trying to destroy aspects. And, and honestly, the whole language thing and, and birthing person, all of that, you like we, we can admit at this point, a rational conversation needs to be had about how extreme they've gotten. All that bullshit. And it's sad to see. It's sad to see. You can really tell, honestly, when the going gets tough, who actually cares about those kind of issues, who's actually willing to fight about those kind of issues, who's actually willing to, like, you know, put the careers or, or put themselves on the line for their beliefs and be like, I think that at its core, there's a fundamental principle here that even if it's not popular, I still need to continue fighting for it. Even if the, the going gets tough and right now it's more dangerous than ever to talk about those kind of topics or even to show a display of solidarity if I'm not part of that group, but to go out there and to be like, yeah, yeah, as a cis person, I will stand up for trans rights. As a white person, I will stand up for black rights because I believe that fundamentally we should end all unjust hierarchies, that this shit shouldn't be allowed to continue to perpetuate, that if we let it go down this road, that the pick me's, y'all won't be safe forever. It never is that way. Eventually, when things go full fascism, if there is a complete economic downturn and all of a sudden the Republicans evolve from fascist light to full-blown fascist, there might be some random, you know, Reichstag fire like event where all of a sudden all it's like, oh, well, we need to assume total power. We need complete military dominance. We need to see a merging of the corporation and the state to preserve capitalism and go full militaristic at this point. Well, then pick me's are liabilities. And then there's only a matter of time. There, there is no such thing as the safe gay amongst the Nazis. The Nazis killed them all. It's the same for every, every other group. They, they come for you all eventually. No one is Aryan enough. No one is pure enough. No one is straight enough. That's, that's the fucking reality of it. So it's sad to see, and, and honestly, it doesn't surprise me that there's a lot of people who are like, that, that road seems easier now. That, that road, honestly, I, I'd like to not have to be bothered by this. I'd, I'd like to just be able to keep my channel going, keep those subs going. Hopefully more people join the Patreon. Hopefully I can appeal to a new demographic of center to center right to far right people who thought that I was just one of the lunatic left back in the day. But now they realize that I, I'm willing to be compromising. I, I am willing to, again, compromise what I consider to be my beliefs to continue to profit. That's what the whole thing is, right? Sad, but not surprising. Hey, if you'd like to unlock secret bonus episodes as well as uncensored content, go to patreon.com slash the serves. This show is produced by Anna Loves Riley, Arian McCarthy, Cheryl Alvarez, Comrade Junkie, Doug Caddy, Everything Important, Hagbard Celine, 
Jimmy Sombrero, Multimondi, Omni, Political Poppy, Preston Kroll, Quiet185, Riley and Anna, Roller Dragon, Cernicus, Stellar Gwyn, Sebastian Demel, Travis McClinton, Trincel, Words Greenwood. With additional support coming from all of these amazing human beings right here.